hello everyone. Um, my name is Mikhail Kokinakis. I'm a scientist at King's College London, also a pediatric surgeon at the Evelina London Children's Hospital. Uh, I'm here just to uh, share my experience with virtual reality with our young patients uh, and really tell you all the difficulties I had to get there and how to do what um, in the previous discussion was uh, mentioned as early validation and uh, implementation of all these wonderful uh, technology uh, adjuncts. So these are my conflicts of interest. So it was back in 2020, and uh, you've had it so many times. Um, before COVID, we wouldn't even think about it. It was uh, early 2020, COVID was coming, and um, I was thinking that we need, to do, we need to lead on clinical innovation. I do come from an institution where we do have a very wealthy charity. That's how I got the funding for the stuff that I'm going to show you. Not everyone has uh, access to this. I also realized that we need to um, not only ensure, but also improve efficiency and effectiveness of our services, deliver high standards of care, and improve uh, health outcomes. So we also had to adapt. All these things that you've been keep hearing from, from everyone today, we had to adapt to the constant changing environment and, of course, meet the, uh, the modern NHS needs. So I was uh, in search of projects, and this is where well, I, got, I got the funding, I've got about 200,000 200, pounds to do different things. You had, we all do kind of different things, I don't know how much you're involved in clinical innovation. 3D planning is a very big thing, augmented reality is another one, that facilitates surgery. But I'm here to tell you about my experience with virtual reality headsets. And it's not about training, what had been done before, it's about the patient's hospital experience, because it's... It's a good thing to say, well, you know, it's all nice and, and good, but what is the data? You need the data. You can go back to your managers so you can approve the, uh, the funding. So why consider virtual reality? Well, it is trendy. There's no doubt about this. Uh, but actually, the main question is, is it value? Is it value for money? Is it value for, for outcomes? Do they actually improve hospital experience? And the main question is, can it, be, can it add any added value to the uh, resources which are available already. So, um, what did we know at the time? Well, we knew that it's becoming increasingly popular. Uh, it's used increasingly popular in medicine. And there were studies, mainly in adults. I remind you, I'm a pediatric surgeon, so I deal with children. Um, there's a lot of studies in, or there were, there were in, in uh, using VR in adult patients undergoing different clinical procedures, dental procedures, blood tests, burns, cancer treatment, but no studies specifically, not many studies for children, certainly no, um, no many studies for pediatric orthopedic uh, patients, which are my kind of uh, pediatric population I treat. Basically, children with broken bones, uh, disabilities, uh, uh, maybe infections of uh, bones, joints, etc. So for me, that was a big opportunity and a challenge to take on. So... Um, these things take time. So when we found out, we, we were lucky that we got the uh, virtual reality headsets from Rescape, as I will show you, for about a month to trial this, and that was for free. And then I uh, had to uh, go through different, um, you name it, IT, security, clinical governance, patient's information. It took about six months to get everything right, but finally got approved that we can do this proof of concept, feasibility, pilot study, that's how you usually start. And um, the main two aims were, is this safe to use in our institution? It might sound funny, but they, you will see we have to, so not everything is safe to use. You need to go through the, the normal uh, process. And there's no, there's no point doing this informally. You have to go through all, uh, all formal pathways. And then our second aim was, does this actually improve hospital experience for our young patients? And does it uh, reduce anxiety uh, when we use this before medical procedures? So uh, we had to do this internal risk assessment, so we asked medical physics to uh, have a look at this. We thought we were going to try in three different work, um, clinical environments. Blood testing, so venipuncture, puncture, plaster room, where they have plasters, casts, either applied or taken off. And we also wanted to uh, have a look at um, going to the operating theatre. Now, we got um, thumbs up for blood tests and plaster room, but not for the operating theatre because you will see that the virtual reality headset that we have has a router that connects to a tablet. 
so they were not sure if it interferes with the anesthetic machinery in the operating theater, which we all know. I know you, you, you do that. I knew that it doesn't, but then again, medical physics wanted more time. We had only one month to, to go through this. We kind of suspected COVID would come, that would make things complicated, so we just ran off. But there's a second arm to the study where we try that. I'm going to show you in the latest um, uh, subjects. So only for a month, we only managed to get about 30, 30 just over 30 kids uh, trialing the virtual reality headsets, and then we collected anxiety scores before and after, and uh, we collected also subject subjective feedback. And that's the headset. Uh, this is from Rescape. It could be any other uh, virtual reality headset that you may have, although uh, Rescape, that's the one that I'm going to show you, share my experience with. I'm going to tell you what this is about. It comes on a big luggage uh, box. There is a, uh, uh, the virtual reality headset with a wireless tablet. That means that the parents, which is very important for us, the parents can see what their children experience within the virtual reality headset. And you will see on the second arm of the study, we also checked parental anxiety and had a very big, good effect on it because parents are also maybe more anxious than their own children when they come to the hospital. There's a router because uh, it connects the, uh, the tablet with a kind of a, 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 a hard drive because the anxiety scores can be saved there and can be shared with us for uh, further analysis. There's a charger and also there's a 3D camera with it, which we haven't, we're about to do, we're about to use this and shoot some 3D films I'll show you later, but we didn't use it at the time. Um, it's designed to be used by any healthcare professional. We need, we all, all of us, including consultants and play specialists and nurses, need to have training. It didn't take long. Uh, it takes about kind of like a whole morning to, to know how to use it, and we can use it on any child at any age. I think the youngest we used it was like uh, three and a half years of age. So there's three in the, uh, in the Rescape virtual reality set. There's three building experience. You can have the so-called escape experience, where you can go on African safari, you can walk around dinosaurs, you can swim uh, amongst kind of in blue-green uh, water with exotic fish. You have the destruction uh, uh, building experience, where you can play games, especially popular with young adolescents, so the older children. And you have the relaxation mode, where uh, it's kind of a, a guided breathing and meditation exercises with relaxing imaging and audiovisual. You have the option to have the audio on if you like. Some children like it because they completely isolate themselves. Some others still like to hear what's, what, what's happening. So, um, so they, they have the option, basically. Um, this is part of the escape. You can travel around the world. Uh, it's all 360 degrees. It's quite funny. I have to say, I use it sometimes when I did a big operation. Just go there, put it on, isolate myself, travel to a beach in Mallorca or travel to Venice or I can go to the space and watch Mars, whatever. It's pretty good, actually. Uh, destruction, I'll show you a video later on how this works. Not for everyone, the slow and fast modes. I get dizzy, I, I, I hate this kind of uh, thing. My, my kids love it and I, I, it is made for, for kids. But you can go for the slow motion one rather than the, the big one. And then you have the relaxation on the meditation, breathing kind of uh, exercises. So this is a video, let's see if it's gonna play. Oh, it doesn't play. Is that, no, it won't play, okay. Sorry for that, it doesn't play, but um, it's, uh, it would be cool if it, it did. But anyway, that's the, um, that's the uh, pain scale, so I have to use a pain scale. That's the one that they have built in within the Rescape virtual reality, and we can do it before and after and find out if it reduces the anxiety scale. So if you see the results, uh, we actually found that uh, down here, 66% of the kids, so 21 out of 32 had statistically significant uh, reduction of, the, of their anxiety before having a blood test and bef before having uh, the plaster room. And all of them, 100%, they would uh, use the device again, which, you know, that's good. You have some data there. You can go back. You need the data. Without the data, you cannot do anything. So although it's a small population, it's still, for us, it was very significant. I went to the child and said, listen, I want two for our award. So we're the only now. Um, Guys and Thomas is like over, what, 6,000 consultants, but the only department has these two virtual reality headsets. It doesn't cost much, but still very difficult to, uh, to, you know. They were talking about robotic surgery, two or three millions. This doesn't cost a few thousand pounds. Still difficult to get uh, in uh, specific uh, institutions. So, um, and what about the, the feedback? I mean, you know, some of them didn't realize they had their blood test done, which is, you know, 
I didn't realize it was already done, it was more relaxing, uh, much, much better, very good distraction, didn't feel a thing. We had feedback from the staff that used this, so we had problems, and, and you get these problems. You, you were hearing, if you were there when we had the Vodafone presentation, how important it is to have 5G within the hospital. So I can tell you, you know, there are problems, although you don't need Wi-Fi with this, with the router, we had problems when, you know, it was down, we have um, Venom factories in a place where there's not very good signal for whatever reasons. You know, these are important things, you know, infrastructure is very important to use any kind of technology. And for this one, it's probably not that, that, that important, but we still had some, some problems there. And then, for example, when we had to apply cast on upper limbs, that was a problem to put them on. They just didn't like it. It's better for the lower limbs. The kind of technicalities that we take in account, you will see now we use it on a daily basis, transform the way we uh, apply our clinical practice. So, um, if you go back to the uh, initial kind of uh, aims of the study, we want to know if it's safe and we want to know if it reduces anxiety scores, and yes, it does. It does both, and that was a statistically kind of significant uh, result um, for the blood test and the plasterium. Now, um, if you want, you can read about this. That's the QR code where we published this on the uh, annals of the Royal College of Surgeons of England uh, earlier this year. Now, moving on, so the limitations, short time frame, we only had it for a month, it was low number of uh, participants, and then we really wanted, the whole idea was that, you know, does it make it easier for them to come for, for surgery, can we reduce the anxiety? Because what you'll find, despite what we've been told, <laughs> all the managers want to know about cost effectiveness, are we saving some money? Are we, for example, reducing cancellations? Do we have reduced need for painkillers? Can we reduce the hospital stay? Can we make for us, is quite common to have like one night stay operations. Can we make them those day cases? So we just needed to, and then we didn't have any control group to, to compare with. So um, a year later, we, everybody said not to do a randomized control trial. Well, anyway, we did one and we had a control group. It wasn't that difficult uh, uh, to do. And then we thought we we're going to check also the parental anxiety and we're also going to uh, check for pain. So all the kids that um, agreed to take part of the study uh, and then the parents gave consent form, uh, they were, uh, they were um, uh, kind of randomized into the group that had the virtual reality and to the group who uh, had the conventional kind of distraction methods. And in an institution like us, um, I heard Ian before saying about Alde Hay, one of the biggest children's hospitals, we are proud to say, Yes, Evelina London Children's Hospital is also one of the biggest children's hospitals in the country. And we do have place specialists, not, not many uh, places have. And then we have kind of different conventional distraction methods that I'm going to show you that we normally have. The question is, is this better? Is this equally good? Or is this worse and doesn't make any difference? That's why we wanted to check. So we checked pain, anxiety of the children, overall hospital experience, and also parental anxiety. This time around, they did all their checks and they found out that we can use it in the operating theater. Now, um, in pediatric orthopedics, we rarely do things, rarely operate under local anesthetic. Usually it's general anesthetic. So all what we check now is from the patient going from the ward down to the anesthetic room and, um, and not further because then they would go uh, to sleep. And we also um, did the same thing when they were in the fracture clinic. So they were coming with broken bones. So the pain and anxiety was quite high. So we wanted to see after, by the way, the virtual reality, those virtual reality headsets are recommended to have on for about nine minutes, not longer. So we checked nine minutes later and see if we made a difference there on their pain, on their anxiety levels. So um, that's a kind of conventional, we say conventional, but you know, we have like PlayStations, Nintendo Switches, Lego, whatever, you know, they need done. And the real question is, do we make a difference with the virtual reality headset or not? Um, this time we had about 64 patients that are included into the study. We randomized them between 4 and 18 years, uh, 18 years of age. And um, uh, as I say, we did that in the fracture clinic and on their way, or just before they went into the operating theater. We checked child anxiety, pain, um, parental anxiety and subjective feedback from everyone. We did the same uh, kind of anxiety levels for the children while we use different um, anxiety levels for the parents. So that's kind of validated way. Because also you need to have validated ways how you collect this data, okay? And not just uh, uh, create your own kind of questions. It just adds to the value of your uh, uh, data. 
and of your research uh, uh, study. We did have subjective feedback. We had to create our own ones. So there were some kind of uh, uh, open questions as well as some uh, questions there with scores so we could uh, kind of uh, analyze it uh, in a better way. So what were the results? So um, we found that VR uh, managed to reduce pain, sorry, managed to reduce anxiety in children on both the fracture clinic, but also before they go to the operating theater. And that, that was what we call in medicine a statistically significant result. So it does reduce anxiety in these clinical environments added to the blood test environment and to the, uh, the, the plastic clinic. What we found also, only a trend when it comes to pain. A trend means that it is not statistically significant. That, that could be because we had uh, uh, only a small uh, group of patients, but mainly it could be because we don't like to have our children having pain. So usually they would have had other painkillers. So the pain initially wasn't that bad, although they had broken bones before the fracture clinic or they might have a broken bone before they went into the operating theater. The pain was quite under control before. So by giving the virtual reality, we didn't make a lot of difference. And we found the same thing because we had a control group. So none of the control group or the virtual reality group managed to show a significant reduction in pain. Um, what uh, uh, we found is that both virtual reality as well as the conventional uh, distraction methods used by our play specialists uh, managed to reduce anxiety equally, statistically significantly or equally, equally. So what does this mean? That means that VR is an alternative distraction method. It's just it's an added thing. You give the option to your, to your patients. Some of them like it, some of them don't, but if they like it, they can have it. And you will see that most of them like this kind of, they're used to this now. We might not be, but they used to, you know, deal with this 3, 3D kind of uh, immersive uh, uh, technology. Um, what we also, they all involved patients and parents in both environments agreed or strongly agreed that they would use VR distraction again or they would recommend it to, uh, to others. So these are the results. When you go to numbers, you see that uh, all kids were kind of uh, uh, randomized, uh, age and, 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 and gender controlled. And then if you see uh, on the back here, we found that 70% um, have the anxiety score decreased in both clinical events, which is quite, quite good actually, while the pain was decreased only in 20% of, uh, of the patients. When it comes to uh, parental anxiety, we found that um, both, uh, both groups managed to uh, reduce anxiety in parents, which is uh, very, very important. Um, and these, uh, these results, when we did the analysis, were comparable. So it was a kind of the same kind of effect on uh, patients' anxiety pre-op and when they were sitting there in the fracture clinic to be seen by one of the uh, uh, specialties. Um, especially in the um, fracture clinic, we found that actually parents were more stressed than the actual children. And then seeing their own children uh, using the VR made them feel so much better, just statistically significant their anxiety, much more than they did with their children. Which for us is very important because we, as, as, as pediatric doctors, we need to uh, have this holistic approach to the whole family so we treat both the children and the parents. So that's a significant effect of uh, VR. So this is the kind of uh, subjective uh, feedback that we got. Um, I felt like I was there in person, and that's the whole idea of VR. Uh, lots of fun. You'll see now that the word fun comes in most uh, subjects. That it felt real. Game was fun. Uh, great distraction, calming effect, nice surprise. I didn't expect that. When it comes to the negative feedback, actually, it was about they wanted more games, so they wanted more time with this, um, or they thought it was very simple or very fast. So these are kind of individual preferences, so nothing really uh, very much. And there was one there that said they, they found it a bit blurry, but usually it's... Uh, I'm afraid I couldn't show you the video, but it's, it's quite, quite nice, uh, normally clear. So uh, when it comes to the outcomes, it is an effective, it's an it's an effective alternative distraction method. 
you can use it with your adult patients or in our case with your pediatric patients if you're working in a pediatric institution. It reduces anxiety in different clinical environments as I showed you, uh, both with the children as well as the parents. Um, and overall it improves the hospital experience. If this is something that you can bring to your managers and justify spending uh, a few thousand pounds to, to buy this. Now, it's not just about finding the funding, it's about who is using it, because you need to have the time to use it. Originally, I was very enthusiastic. I thought I can get my SHO or our nurse to do that. They have no time. None of the old nurses are going to use this, and none of your junior doctors are going to use this and take the time. They don't need long. They, they need about five to seven minutes to show the parents and the patients how to put it on. Um, they're still not going to do it. So uh, you need to have a play specialist, because that's what she does. So unless you have a full-time play specialist, there's no point uh, getting one of these because nobody will uh, give it to the, uh, to the, uh, to the kids. And if, if you leave them to try it on themselves, they probably uh, break it or whatever. And then um, with regards to, uh, to the kids, everyone is delighted to, uh, to have them, or mo almost everyone. Um, we use it now at the Evelina London Children's Hospital on a daily basis in the uh, pediatric orthopedic ward. Um, and it really has revolutionized the way that we, we do stuff. The question is about cost effectiveness. That's why I asked the question earlier on, if you saw, because we also want other wards to take the same thing. And I got it from the charity, but now we need to find the service managers to fund this. And this is where we need, unfortunately, in our case, maybe I need to find this nice way, as Ian was saying every, uh, later on, find ways how to show that there is value for this without having to show cost effectiveness. But at the moment, one of the things that we have a great opportunity, we're just building a new hospital, it's a day surgery hospital. So for us, if virtual reality, and probably it's going to be a multifactorial effect, like it's not going to be just virtual reality, but compared with, in combination with other stuff, such as nerve blocks and so on, when it applies to pediatric orthopedics, maybe we need to show that actually we are saving money, such as uh, reducing uh, painkillers, the need for painkillers, reducing cancellations because they feel more comfortable about this, because they don't have a lot of anxiety, they don't want to run away, and hopefully we can reduce uh, the hospital stay. So we plan now uh, another randomized control trial with a con control trial with a control group to uh, see, to, to check for the cost effectiveness so we can uh, uh, justify buying more stuff of this. And one of the things that we're going to do this via adding more fun to our patients, so we're going to use uh, this camera, these 3D cameras that it's included into this. So um, uh, we're going to uh, shoot kind of in 3D environment the patient's journey from the ward down to the operating theater. And we're going to show that to the patients at the time of the listing for surgery or the preoperative assessment clinic. So they can all uh, watch this and hopefully, you know, that will show that, yes, it does reduce anxiety and hopefully it, it saves money for the uh, trust. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.